my fight fans. So, fight night's concluded. And, guys, this was actually one hell of a fight night. You know, you had that Steven Wonderboy Thompson. These guys literally went at it. Him and Kevin Holland, they went at it. I'm telling you, this is definitely one hell of a fight. Definitely a uh, fight you definitely want to see. So, if you have ESPN+, Plus, you definitely want to go check that out for sure. But, it was one hell of a fight, guys. One hell of a fight. Um, Can you say... Um, Kevin Holland could take a punch. Yes, you can. He 100% could take a punch. He 100% could take a kick. I mean, you've seen those kicks. You've seen the way those high kicks that he was landing. Um, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson landing on him. Good God. I mean, oh my God. It was back and forth. It was back and forth. You know, I think Kevin Holland broke his hand possibly. I do believe, I believe the news is out that he may have. So, but still, you got to give it up to him. He held in there. He held in there. But it was a fourth round stoppage. Well, no, I would say, yeah, possibly fourth round stoppage, I guess you could say at the end of the fourth. They stopped the fight before the fifth round went into it. But, yeah, I mean, it was one epic fight. One epic fight. I definitely enjoyed it from start to finish. You know, it was unfortunate for Kevin Holland because he did drop Stephen Wonderboy Thompson quite a few times. And, uh, unfortunately, he just did not um, follow him to the ground. And I do believe that was his mistake. And I do believe a lot of people agree with that. You know, it was just really, really bad. The fact that he was able to, you know, he could have done something. Maybe initiated some kind of ground and pound. He could have did something to get dictate, you know, more of the ground game. And make Stephen Wonderboard um, more afraid to in, engage. Just so Kevin Holland could show a little bit more of his ground skills. Because of, uh, I know, I do believe that Kevin Holland is a black belt um, in jiu-jitsu. I think under Travis Luter, if I'm correct. So, <clears throat> with that being said, he should have been able to do something on the ground. But, unfortunately, with his decision to allow Stephen Wonderboy up, yes, did it bring a more exciting fight? Yes, but it did not, um, it didn't give him the win. It could have gotten him the win if he would have followed Stephen to the ground and did some ground and pound. Maybe a do a few submission attempts, wear Stephen out a little bit because Stephen was definitely, you know, on his toes. He had all the energy he needed because, you know, he fought... Kevin Holland fought the style that he wanted. You know, this is this is uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's bread and butter. Wonderboy loves to stand up. Wonderboy loves to showcase his karate skills. And he has some tremendous skills. Very tremendous. You saw in those kicks. You know, he was rocking Kevin Holland back and forth, back and forth. His head just kept bouncing around like a bobblehead. You know, so it's just, it was really bad. It was really bad. So I do believe that that was a, a really bad decision on Kevin Holland's part to uh, let Stephen Wonderboy up on those multiple times. But nonetheless, still a great fight. So what happens for both of them? Well, Kevin Holland is still under unranked, so you can still he can still play the field a little bit. You know, he did come off a couple of losses already. You know, he did lose right now to Stephen Wonderboy, and he lost to Hamza. Uh, but that Hamza fight, you kind of kind of give him a little bit of a pass because he did step in, he did do the good company man decision, um, and help save the pay per view card back in September when Hamza was supposed to fight fight um, Nate Diaz. But unfortunately, the fight fell through. It didn't go didn't go down the way it was supposed to go down. You already know. We discussed it multiple times. Hamza missed weight. So the fight card got shuffled around. And eventually, we end up with Hamza Chamayev versus Kevin Holland in the co-main event. So, um, yes, he did, he did get steamrolled by Hamza. But no shame there. You know, it's Hamza Chamayev. He is definitely one hell of a fighter himself. Um, you look at Steven Wonderboy. Again, once fought for a title fight. Actually fought for a title fight twice. Um, <clears throat> and has always fought some heavy, heavy hitters and heavy contenders. So, you know, it's no shame to hang over his head. You know, it's like, hey, you know, let's not, let's not try to rush things. You know, you've been in it for a long time, but he's been in the, <clears throat> he spent most of his time at <clears throat> middleweight. So he's been shuffling around a little bit and is making himself more comfortable at welterweight. So let him still develop more skills. I know there's a, quite a few names out there that you can still go against. You know, you still got your Michael Chiesa's, you still got your um, Neil Magny's, you still got your, you know, all these other top contenders up there. Even Vicente Luque would actually be a very fun fight as well with him versus Kevin Holland. So there's quite a few options out there for Kevin. For Steven, <clears throat> he was ranked, the number, I think, number six. And he already beat Jeff Neal, who's, I think, ranked ahead of him, if I'm correct. You know, he, could, he did lose to, um, to Gilbert Burns. And he did lose to that uh, other one, I believe, um, oh yeah, Bilal Muhammad. So he's lost to a few other fighters in, in the higher ranks. 
but you never know. He could actually have a rematch with Jeff Neal. That could be a potential um, one right there. He could always go have another one, another go around with Jorge Masvidal, but who knows there. Um, you never know. <clears throat> he could possibly face the winner of Gilbert Burns or the loser of Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny. That's also another one there. So, yeah, these are a couple of good matchups for Stephen Thompson as well to keep him busy. So, But it was a great fight. Great fight night, guys. Great fight night. Also on that card, you have Rafael Dos Anjos, who is pretty much turning back the clock. You know, he pretty much went in there and was able to do the thing, was able to dictate um, where the fight, fight took place. You know, <clears throat> he was able to pretty much grapple his opponent. I'm not too familiar with his opponent. I know he fought Robbie Lawler. I know he's um, up there in the ranks as well. He's getting there slowly, but surely. But it was a, he's still relatively unknown. He's still, you know, he's definitely making a name for himself as a very action-packed fighter. And this was another good step up for him. So forgive me, I am I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. But nonetheless, uh, Rafael Dos Santos was pretty much able to grapple him at will. Pretty much take him to the ground and was able to get that submission. And try, <clears throat> got him in what was in the rear naked. And a lot of people didn't think he had it in it. But because I, I, I guess the way the angle was, it was right there next to the cage. You really couldn't see it. It really couldn't get a really good visual on it. Um, but nonetheless, he was able to tap him out. I believe it was in the second round, if I'm correct. And then you uh, you look at you look at uh, the way he's performing later on in his career. You know he does have quite a few losses, and he is getting older. So do you think he's going to be in the uh, in there in the welterweight division himself? You know what I just mentioned about Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. That could be another fun fight as well, also for Kevin Holland. But nonetheless, Rafael dos Santos doesn't seem like a welterweight. You know you look at him; he is doesn't have that size. I honestly, when I saw the fight lined up, I really thought it was at lightweight. But then they mentioned it at Walter. I was like, oh, my God. You know, but, yeah, it's uh, Rafael Dos Santos just does, just does not have that body frame. Imagine putting up putting him up there with a Kevin Holland. It would not be a good night for uh, It would not be a good night for Rafael Dos Santos. Nor would it be if he decided to go against Kevin, uh, not Kevin Holland, um, Wonderboy Thompson as well. You know, because that's another one. You know, they're both at welterweight, and they're both coming off wins, so you, you can easily match those two guys up. But unfortunately, that's not the guy that he called out. He did not call out any one of those guys. If you guys were listening, or if the guys that watch, or I suggest you go watch it, he actually called out Conor McGregor. He called out Conor McGregor because he says six years ago, he fought uh, Donald Cerrone and defended his title. And he was supposed to fight um, Conor McGregor right after that title fight, but unfortunately, he got hurt. And then we already know that story. Conor McGregor went on, fought uh, Nate Diaz on late replacement, and then like, so forth and so another opponent, Nate Diaz part two, and then became the welterweight champion, uh, lightweight champion, excuse me, lightweight champion against beating Eddie Alvarez. So I guess uh, Rafael Dos Santos just still has that kind of heat on him, still kind of has that uh, chip on the shoulder, like, hey, I could have got that. You know, that Nate Diaz, that, you know, superstardom, that could have been me. I could have beaten Conor McGregor because we already know Conor McGregor was riding this, you know, this mile high, this crazy high on being the star, you know, the star status that he had. The star status he had at the uh, at the UFC at that time was just amazing. It was incredible. Nobody's ever seen it like that. No one's ever seen somebody rise that fast and rise to that kind of superstar status in a very long time. You look at all the champions from Brock Lesnar, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, all of them. No one ever had that real high status like a Conor McGregor at that time. Conor McGregor was pretty much on top of the world. So, you know, Rafael feels like possibly he feels like, hey, I could have got that fight. I could That could have been me. But, you know, at the end of the day, things happen. He got hurt. He was not able to get that fight. So now it looks like he's calling for that fight. Is he going to get it? I don't see it. I honestly don't. Um... Just due to the fact that it's just, I think Conor McGregor is trying his best to be uh, more in that topper level, you know, because I do feel like Conor McGregor feels like he doesn't have a whole lot left. So I don't see him trying to climb up the title ranks. I get um, my suggestion, or not a suggestion, but my thinking is he might try to go in there for another title fight, possibly at welterweight, just due to the fact that his name, you know, that's his name. He does carry a lot of names. You know, and a lot of fighters want to fight him. Why? Not just because of his name, but because of the fact that that name, what that name brings. That name brings money. So when you fight Conor McGregor, like he says, Red Panty Night, you're going to get paid. So that champion, even though I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's not the right time. It's not right. It's not fair. Don't matter. You know, every champion knows this. You are, if you're going to go against him, you could potentially face someone that you're where you're going to get maybe about 
600, 500,000, 600,000, maybe close to seven, somewhere around that time, type of frame. When you face Connor, you are going to get that plus more, plus more pay per view buys. Why? Because Connor McGregor sells more pay per views. We know this. So, do I see him facing Rafael dos Anjos? Very unlikely. Very unlikely. I'm not going to rule it out completely, but very unlikely. But let me know what you guys think. What do you think is going to be next for Stephen Wonderboy Thompson? What do you think is going to be next for Rafael dos Anjos? What do you think is going to be next for Kevin Holland? Let me know all this in the comments, guys. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.